Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Soul Patrol. 10 8, Jess. 10 8. We're both 10 8. Reporting for duty, sir. Reporting for duty, sir. Hey, hey Michael. This is, uh, this is uh, Catholic Intel Catholic Briefing mm-hmm. Monday, Wednesdays. Well, Monday through Fridays, actually. We're trying to give Catholics uh, information, especially Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on spiritual warfare, Tuesdays and Thursdays on muscular Christianity. By the way, I'm going to be this weekend, this Saturday, I'm going to be tomorrow, Paula San Diego at the San Juan Diego Center at the Divine Mercy Conference, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hope to see you there. And I'm looking for uh, a few more Catholics to come with me to Poland, May 13th to the 22nd. Poland is like Catholic Disneyland. It's uh, going to be, we'll be there at the birth, the 100-year anniversary of St. John Paul II, his birthday. And so uh, it's going to be an incredible time. Uh, I'm going to be giving lectures nine days straight. Uh, daily mass, daily sacraments. Uh, it's going to be a time to receive indulgences. So if we all die in Poland, we go straight to heaven. How's that? <laughs> Not a bad deal. Eddie, uh, we got some good stuff today. Uh, a, a, a straight up, straight talks on exorcism today. I think the people are going to really enjoy today's catechesis. Yeah, yes, I think so. We're going to talk a little bit later uh, about a couple of different topics. But to start the day off, we're going to talk about uh, 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 bells again. We're going to talk about uh, why... Uh, an exorcist explains why the devil hates bells so much, and I think it's a good uh, thing for us to know, Jess, because amongst the sacramentals that we normally have in our house, us uh, practicing Catholics might incorporate a, a new one, and we'll, we'll learn about that today. Yeah, go ahead and start it off. It's a, it's a great article. We'll just go back and forth on it. Go ahead. Sure, sure. It says this. It says, the devil hates everything beautiful, and the bells are specifically used to draw attention to the divine worship of God. Uh, the devil hates bells. A deacon involved in the deliverance ministry recently told my husband and me, this is uh, Patty Armstrong writing the uh, the article. She says, he is actually our daughter's father-in-law. So it, just, uh, so it was just a, a casual conversation, or at least for us it was. She says, I never uh, heard of a bell, uh, of the bell of version. So during my next interview with an exorcist, this one from the Mountain West, I asked about it. Father Theophilus, uh, which means love loved of God, but it's not his real name because exorcists usually need to keep their identity secret, confirmed it. The devil hates bells, he said. I use them in sessions all the time. I have a nicely toned consecration bell that I use. And just, I have to mention that the times that uh, I've helped at, at, at uh, uh, Deliverance, the uh, when we were singing the divine praises, uh, I used to go up to the altar and ring the bells and uh, I remember, I, I didn't realize it, that that was actually the use of these the bells that we're talking about. Correct. But he says, yep. uh, yeah, the devil, yep. the devil has, yeah, he says, the devil has screamed. This is the uh, the the uh, the priest Pardon. talking. The devil has screamed, knock it off at the sound of bells during exorcisms and tried to knock them out of his hand. The rite of exorcism uses prayers and holy water. But Father Theophilus uh, also brings many tools into the fight against evil, such as music, chants, sacred art, a team of prayer warriors, holy water, and blessed bells to overwhelm the devil. Patty continues writing. She says, why bells, I asked. Well, the priest answers, Father Theophilus, Satan is always attacking us through our senses, he said. So the liturgy itself needs to be a holy assault on our senses our sight, our touch, our smells, and hearing. Well, it makes a lot of sense here. The theology is rich here. He says, we have prayed as a church with all these sensual things because she learned through, she learned through millennia that this is what repels the enemy. Father Theophilus uses his altar or sanctus handheld bells. He says, when these consecrated bells are used at mass, it is to say, look at him, the word made flesh, he said, the bell humiliates the devil because it's a non-rational object that is doing what they were made to do. They, speaking about the demons, don't want to adore God. And so another reason the devil hates bells is because they hate everything beautiful and holy. And according to Father Theophilus, he says, quote, We are moved by beauty. It stirs our souls. Beautiful music, beautiful prayers, 
flowers, beautiful tones. The devil hates everything beautiful, and the bells are specifically used to draw attention to the divine worship of God. Eddie, every, I, I've kind of known all this, but he's, he's making it a lot clearer in my mind because he's giving, he's giving good analogies. He's giving some uh, good, uh, good, clear explanations. But I've kind of understood this because I was schooled by somebody else on the power of sacred bells. But this article is taking my understanding to a deeper level. Just one of the things I love to remind the listeners about, and I've done this before, but I'll keep doing it, is that this is what the Catholic Church has over Protestants. This has to do with the development of our disciplines, just uh, in, 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 in the ritual, because uh, through the millennia, like uh, like the priest says, uh, we have learned, the Catholic Church has learned what affects the devil. Yeah. And, and we know that the devil doesn't knock this off during an exorcism. Hey, that's, that's, a, that's a sign of something to use uh, in, in future exorcisms. <laughs> and that's what they're doing. That's the beauty of the bells. Yeah. Continue, Eddie, with the article. Yeah, it says, um, okay, where are we here? It uh, is customary to bless. It is customary to bless everything involved in the liturgy and to bless the church bells also. Father Theophilus said, blessings make things holy, set apart for God. Everything in the liturgy needs to be set apart for God. Just as the sanctus bells give glory to God, so too does the ringing of church bells. Whether the church has an old cast iron bell or an electronic recording, Father Theophilus says, uh, he explains that both can be blessed. Traditionally, church bells called us to prayer, he said. If you have an Angelus app on your phone, a bell will ring to alert you. The Angelus is a Catholic prayer originating with the 11th century monastic custom. The church bells call people at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. to pray the Angelus, which is Latin for angel. People stopped what they were doing, knelt down, and prayed. The Angelus commemorates the incarnation when the angel Gabriel declared to the Virgin Mary, and she responded by saying, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's part of the uh, the Angelus, Jess. A, lo- a lot to comment on there. Yeah. And on the next segment, Eddie, I'm going to want you to read the prayer. There's a beautiful prayer there. Uh, that priests say when they when they bless the bells when they when they consecrate the bells I've never heard that that prayer before it's rich it it seems to me like a, a, an exorcism prayer over the bells but what you shared there let me say a few things <clears throat> um, the the exorcists in our country that are using Father Ripperger's the the uh, medical protocol what they're doing now because they realize how powerful this prayer is. Because the devil hates the incarnation, so he hates the Angelus, because it's a reminder, uh uh-oh, they're reminding me again why I was banished from heaven because I refused to worship God incarnate. So the Angelus is a constant reminder why you were fired, as Donald Trump used to say on The Apprentice. You're fired. (laughs) You're fired. Satan was fired from being the top angel in heaven because he refused to submit to the incarnation and worship God incarnate. So the Angelus, the medical protocol is they'll put people who are possessed, and it's a good thing to do even if you're not possessed. Not a bad, uh, they'll, they'll, you have to pray before they'll even see you for 30 days, uh, 6 a.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m. That's one of the prayers that a possessed person has to say before the exorcist will see him after 30 days. And a lot of exorcists will tell you, they'll say, if the person does this strictly, Along with the auxilium Christianorum prayers at night, the daily rosary, and 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 to read the Bible, they'll have them read the Bible also six a.m., twelve noon, and six p.m. They'll say, in thirty days when they come into the office, it's cleared up, the demons are gone, because they've reoriented their life to they they've they've um, formed their moral conscience according to the Word of God, and they've reoriented their their bodily. Their, their their inclinations yes. now they've reoriented their inclinations instead of to masturbation or or meth you know meth or marijuana or or, or pornography any, any they've reoriented it towards prayer now yeah and so uh yeah this this uh it, and the devil on i don't know any of you saw the video that was attached to this little article yeah that, that, that it was a powerful video i uh, it was it's like a cartoon video animated yeah but it showed the devil and a demons in cartoon form, 
And I mean, they, they look fierce and, and strong. And then it showed in this little, it's like an eight minute video. And then it showed like in the five minute mark, they started playing the church bells. And it, it shows the theology. The devils and demons started hearing the church bells and they fled back into hell, some of them, and some of them just went back into hiding. And I was thinking about that. What a good, this is exactly what happens when Catholics unleash prayers, church bells, uh, chants. This is the stuff that happens on the spiritual realm that they're driven out and they go back into hiding. And if anybody wants to see that video, get the link on the show page, vmpr.org, get the link and the video is on there when you click on it. And it's a powerful, it's a powerful demonstration of the power of Catholic prayer and Catholic sacramentals. Cause that's what a bell is. It's a sacramental. Yeah, Jess, that, that was, that was really a, an amazing video. You know, it did show it, it showed how those church bells, once they began ringing, how it affected the demons. It, it affected all of hell. And like you described, you know, some demons went back into hell and some, some, some just went into hiding, uh, including the devil. But, uh, but just a couple of things I wanted to say about this. One, in, in Luke 19, you know, Gabriel the archangel declares that he stands in the presence of Almighty God, maybe doing with some fallen angels job would have been if they hadn't rebelled against God. This is important. And now we'll talk about this some more just coming up after yeah, the break. The prayer, Eddie. Share the prayer we'll, in the next segment. We'll do the prayer. Powerful. Next, yep. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Jesus 911 or 10 This is Jesse Romero. And I'm Terry Barber from the Terry and Jesse Show. And we invite you to listen to the Holy Hour of Power, High Energy Catholic Radio. We're two Catholics with a PhD in common sense. Or one Monday through Friday on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. What we're going to give you is masculine Catholic teachings on the faith. You know, we say we're too inspired to be tired, we're too protected to be dejected, and we're too renewed to be subdued. Why? Because we believe in Jesus Christ and His bride, the church. And we will take each issue of the day and show you how the Catholic Church has the answer for our culture. What we really do is bring men back into the Catholic Church, which it's about time to do. We want men to be leaders in their Catholic faith so that they can bring their family to heaven. Our program is not right versus left. It's right versus wrong. And our program is where Catholicism and culture intersect. It's high-energy Catholic radio. We're going to inspire you to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ. Christ and his bride to the church. The Terry and Jesse Show on the Virgin Most Powerful app. Leviticus 11.44 says, Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am holy. St. Vincent Pilati said, You must be holy in the way God asks you to be holy. God does not ask you to be a Trappist monk or a hermit. He wants you to sanctify the world and your everyday life. May God show us the path to holiness and help us to follow it all the days of our life. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, 10-8, two-man car. Jess and Eddie, two retired L.A. cops. We're here giving you some Catholic briefing, Catholic intel. Put all the stuff in your war bag. Why? Because life is war. Where does it say that? Job chapter 7, verse 1. Dewey Reams Bible says life on earth is warfare. We're giving you the proper information so you can go out and, as the Bible says, uh, fight the good fight of faith. Uh, St. Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 
I think it's four. Eddie, a uh, powerful prayer that priests use to bless these bells. Where, where does the prayer come from? Just the prayer comes from the ritual Ramonim. The, uh, the, the actual... It's actually a book of blessings, but it also is where the uh, the priests get the uh, the actual ritual, uh, the exorcism rite, etc. But this this is one of the prayers I wanted to mention, just because it's really really a beautiful prayer, and oh, you'll see God. the beauty in it. Uh, it's a very beautiful blessing, uh, uh, and this blessing that we're going to read here was done in uh, in 2017 at uh, at Saint Maria Goretti Parish in Westfield, Indiana, and this is what it says. This is what the priest said when he did the blessing. He says. Over the bells. Yeah. Over the bells. This is over the bells. He says, tonight, as we God's people ask to, to bless and set aside these five bells, which are to be installed beginning tomorrow morning for use in this holy church, for his service and his use, may by the Holy Spirit God make these five bells hallowed through our prayer this night, so that when these bells are tolled and rung in the future, the faithful may be invited and called to the house of God and to everlasting life. Just this is one of the uh, things that that the devil hates mostly is that he knows that this is a call for us to pray and how powerful prayer is. And that's pro- that's like a call to arms. A call to prayer is a call to arms, and demons know that they're about to get beat up. That's what's happening. <laughs> okay. Then he father goes on. He says, "May the church's faith and piety be made stronger whenever they hear its melodious peals." At the sound of these bells, may all evil spirits be driven far away. Mm. May thunder and lightning storm and tornado, hail, and wind, and all kinds of evil be banished at the echoing of their sound. And may all evil flee at the sight of the holy cross that is engraved on each of them. May all evil and temptation flee at the sound of these bells. And uh, it says, Tonight we ask that our Lord Jesus Christ himself grant for us. Take notice of this, of the incredible spiritual weight the bells that the bells are given. Tonight they become instruments of God's power in the war between heaven and hell. We pray tonight that whenever these bells may ring, may the ancient enemy take flight. May the Christian people unite and hear the call to faith. May the empire of Satan be terrified at their ringing. And may we as God's people be strengthened as we are called together by these bells. May the sound of these bells be as pleasing to God as it was to King David playing King David's playing of the harp in the Old Testament. Ah, there's the biblical basis for all this. Exactly. It says, And as the peals of thunder frightened and drove away an army of enemies while Samuel uh, slayed an unblemished lamb as a holocaust to the eternal king, so too when these bells ring in the clouds over St. Maria Goretti and Westfield as we gather in this church for the Eucharistic banquet, the ultimate sacrifice of the eternal king May legions of angels stand watch and guard over the assembly of your holy church to protect us in body and spirit. Wow, just that's amazing. Uh, wow. It says, Finish up the prayer there, I guess. Yeah, he says. The, the prayers are so rich, I'm just like, I'm yeah. getting chills. No, it's true. These bells will call down angels, legions of them. God continues to watch over and protect his church. There are no ordinary bells. And what we do tonight is no ordinary blessing. And what we have built for God and am now clo- and am now close to completing has eternal significance. Let us remember from wow. from now on, every time we hear a church bell or bells, whether it be here or anywhere in the world, with each ring and each peal, a spiritual power is being given to us by our God. May ringing may each ringing bell remind us to thank Him for the many blessings in our life. Just there's there's multiple things we can talk about here as far as what uh, what happens when the bells the bells ring. Well, you see, the the prayer says that the bells call down angels, and it reminds me of that movie. It was called El Gran Milagro, the Great Miracle. It, right. It's a it's a video of the Holy Mass, and it, it you know it shows several people that are that are going to Mass and their experiences that in prayer. And that video is spot on, Eddie, because it shows this theology that you just read here from the Roman ritual. It shows that during the bringing of the bells, angels come down. They, they come right through the roof and stuff, and they fall and ascend around the sanctuary. And at the same time, it shows <clears throat> that uh, before that, there's demons in the nave of the church tempting the lay people. And, uh, and and during the consecration, the way those demons leave, they have to leave as the church is flooded with angels. So if you want to see the theology of the Roman ritual, 
get the movie. It's on the internet. It's called The Great Miracle, El Gran Milagro. It was done by a, a, a production company in Mexico, but it was very well done. It was done in cartoon format. It was great. It was animated. It was wonderful, Jess. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you where I learned about this first. Probably, I probably heard about this maybe 10 years ago. There's, a, there's the lay equivalent of Dan Schneider and Kyle Clement. He's from Mexico. His name's Benjamin Sepulveda. He 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 uh he's the again, he's the Dan Kyle, uh, the Dan Schneider and, and, and Kyle Clement uh in Mexico. The Spanish speaking version. Yeah. yeah. He's he he works for the Cardinal in Mexico, in Mexico City, and they've installed him as an instructor of healing uh, liberation and exorcism. So he teaches courses along with the priest in Mexico. And I'll tell you one thing, Eddie, Mexico, one thing, you know, I criticize Mexico for, you know, a lot of the socialist policies and the cartels and stuff. But one thing they get right is those bishops over there understand the reality of the devil, even amongst some of their liberation theology knuckleheads out there. But they, Mexico is, ta- is, 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 let's just say they're not lacking an exorcist. Uh, right. They're installed everywhere in every diocese, multiple ones. And I got this from Ben, ben- I mean, Benjamin Sepulveda. But he's the one that told me, he goes, hey, Jess, you know, we're talking one day because I'm always picking his brain. He's, just, he's very, again, just like he's like Dan and Kyle. And I just was asking him, hey, uh, I noticed that you got a little suitcase here. Uh, I said, what is that? He goes, oh, these are the, the bells breast by the Cardinal in Mexico City. They're exercise bells. I said, what's that? He goes, oh, when I come to L.A. and I bring them here, and when we do conferences, I give them to the Catholic priest because they've been Blessed by a bishop, I had the priest say an opening prayer and, and ring the bells before. And uh, he goes, it has a very powerful effect. He goes, it drives evil spirits out. I said, you're kidding me. So he went into the whole theology just like this article. And, uh, and, and they do this very effectively. I've seen it done. Every year they have a big Hispanic conference in, in the L.A. sports arena or at the convention center. You know, they get like 15,000 people. Benjamin Sepulveda, he's one of the speakers generally. They always get him out here to speak. He's very, very smart, very uh, well-read in this area. And uh, they'll bring exorcists from Mexico because <clears throat> L.A. doesn't, uh, I guess, I guess there's nobody to represent from Los Angeles, so to speak. So Mexico, they bring in two or three exorcists from Mexico that are very popular. And uh, I've been there and stuff, and I watch them do their opening prayers, and the priest will start ringing the bells. And, and Eddie, it's... it's uh, You'll you'll see. I mean, hundreds hundreds of people will fall off their seats and go into full apoplectic demonic manifestations at the ringing of these bells. I've seen it, so I've seen the power. And the priest will keep on ringing until these people stop manifesting, which takes several minutes. And uh, and he's and he's doing prayers of deliverance and healing prayers over them. But that was the first time I said, "Whoa!" I never I never knew anything about exercise bells but i've seen it in action so this article is very significant to me jesse you know we have to remember that the bells are what calls people to gather and worship so it's talking about the mass and and even in 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 pre-mass in in old testament christianity and exodus 23 21 god says he sends an angel to lead the israelites to battle where he god will destroy their enemies and so during the mass, when when people you know when when the priest celebrates the mass, what's happening is a destruction just of our enemies, the angels uh, uh, that 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 exists in the air in our sins, etc. And so this is what's happening. We have to remember that that the mass, the bells remind the devil that mass, that the worship, the only valid worship there is, is is what's coming. Down the pike. It's going to be happening very shortly. This is why it affects them. This is why it's effective during exorcisms. And uh, it reminds them that the battle has already been lost. Even though they're still fighting it, Jess, the battle, their battle, has been lost. And uh, and this is a, the beautiful thing about the... Uh, the ringing of the bells, like I, and just just like I just said, look up the uh, uh, if you look up the uh, the ritual Romanum, uh, the blessing of the of the uh, bells. It, re- it says a lot of the same language. It's on the internet that we, uh, yeah, that we just read uh, that prayer. And, and Eddie, this all makes sense because once again, the church has, it has been doing this for 2000 years. So the church sees what works and, right. and what doesn't work, so to speak. 
I think if you start playing some, I don't know, some 1970s, 1980s, you know, Bob Hurd uh, music from uh, Oregon, uh, pub, you know, OCP publications uh, from your missalette, I don't think you're going to have much effect on these demons. You know, you're you're playing these banjo uh, uh, guitar songs uh, with poor theology, like saying Jesus is in the bread. Uh, the devils are going to laugh at those heretical statements. And so, so or saints uh, and sinners are friends. That's what one yeah. of the songs says. Or, yes. you know, all are welcome. All are well, welcome. All Try <laughs> singing that in front of a possessed person. See what happens. Okay. And yeah. so, this is why the church. Once again, the church has perfected her craft, so to speak. Yep. And to me, the prayers, the bells, the chants, all this stuff, the holy water, the blessed salt, the sacramentals, the crucifix, the, these are already items that have been battle-tested. So the church is saying, we don't need to listen to Protestants, you know, Bob Larson, you know, wannabe Catholic priests. We don't need to listen to Amazon pagan people and see what they do, Okay. Uh, the Catholic Church has been has been given the full arsenal or weaponry against the diabolical. We don't need to look to anything else. On the contrary, people need to look at us. Yes, and mass is is worship. People have to remember at the at the Catholic mass is how we worship. If you want to talk about fellowship, if you want to talk about doing other things, let's talk about that. But that's not Catholic mass. Catholics have to understand this is where Catholic Catholics worship God. The best that the Protestants can do, the non-Catholics, is to tell God how great He is when they praise Him, and that's that's worthy, that's beautiful. But that's not Catholic worship, and this is the beauty of it. This is what I talk about just when. I when I remind the listeners that that this is the importance of a two thousand years of of battling the devil and the demons and coming out with like you said what works not what doesn't work, <laughs> Eddie. And there's a lot of things that don't work that have come out. I'm gonna be honest with you. Since after 1965, after Vatican II, we because what's happened is a lot of people that are involved in healing deliverance in the Catholic Church. And I know because I was involved in, in that movement for a long time. And so I understand they were poorly formed. They, they, re- they received a Protestant approach to deliverance. And so they've tried to baptize it Catholic, but it doesn't work out too well. Justin, the primary model to use is not Catholic. That's already been said by, uh, by Kyle and Dan. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus 911, we're 10 8. We'll be right back after the short break. Welcome to our January 11, 2020 Spiritual Warfare Conference. Every year without fail, this is our most popular, well-attended event. This year's Spiritual Warfare Conference will host Adam Bly, a Catholic demonologist, and an auxiliary member of the International Association of Exorcists, along with Dr. Luis Sandoval, a psychiatrist who's part of the Healing, Deliverance, and Exorcism team for the Diocese of Orange. These two gentlemen bring tons of experience and expertise in the area of spiritual warfare. This is going to be a high-information Catholic seminar. I'll be there as well, sharing some riveting stories on the diabolical and liberation found through Jesus Christ from my best-selling book, The Devil in the City of Angels. Mark your calendars, come and join us, and meet other radio hosts from Jesus 911. Contrary to popular belief, spiritual warfare is not demon-centered. It's Christ-centered. Come join us and learn how to armor up and fight the good fight of faith. Catholics, wake up. Don't hit the snooze button. Join us at St. Christopher Catholic Church, 629 South Glendora Avenue, West Covina, California, on January 11, 2020. See you then. Strength and honor in Jesus' name. This is Terry Barber. I want to invite you to take advantage of having your funeral or your loved one's funeral at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. It's a 115-year-old church, beautiful chapel. And all you got to do is call me at 661-972-7872 and I'll personally make the arrangements with your mortuary to have your funeral or your loved one's funeral here at Sacred Heart Chapel. You won't regret it. 661-972-7872. God love you. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. 
and they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. So here's a provocative question. Can anyone perform exorcisms? Okay. Great article. Uh, it's on alatea.org. By the way, alatea is it's a Greek word which means truth. Uh, it got some pretty good Catholic articles on that website. And uh, so here, Philip Koslowski says the following. He says, Beware of any exorcism ministry that claims a priest is not required. Okay? And uh, by the way, this is the Protestant position. Hey, we're all priests. We don't need Catholic priests. <clears throat> the article says, Requests for exorcisms have been steadily on the rise during the past 10 years, prompting the Catholic Church in the U.S. to increase her number of priests exorcists from 12 to 50. Now, this article was two years ago, so I, there's there's more than that right now. I, I know there's about 85. Uh, thanks be to God, and there's more and more coming out all the time. Nevertheless, a recent trend has been has seen the emergence of countless online exorcism ministries. That's what's dangerous right there. These ministries are primarily led by Protestant groups, and as we mentioned, the big one out there, a guy, I think he means well, Bob Larson, but again, He's, uh, he's really going outside of his lane of authority by dressing like a Catholic priest and trying to copy everything the Catholic Church does, except, uh, uh, of course, no, no invocation of Mary and sacramentals and stuff. The article says, okay, so these ministries are par- primarily led by Protestant groups, but sometimes they use Catholic prayers, including the official exorcism rite, which you could get from the Internet. <clears throat> As well... It doesn't take long to find the exorcism right online, and Catholics may be tempted to pray the official prayers when faced with worries about the work of the devil in their lives. <clears throat> Let me stop and tell you why lay Catholics should not use this prayer. Okay, This prayer is like the Catholic Church's heavy artillery. It's, it's called you know the Ritual Romanum, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Now, <clears throat> what you're doing is basically like I like the way that Dan gives the metaphor. He's you know all of our prayers we're like fi- firing, you know, from our Glock, from an AR-15, from a shotgun. But this prayer, the exorcism right, it's like dropping a bomb out to the battlefield. You're going to do damage to the diabolical, but what's going to happen? The other ones are going to say, "What the heck was that? Did you see that bomb go off?" Man, look at all the casualties of our fellow demons. Oh, okay, it's on. Who threw that bomb? Retaliation is coming up. That's the problem with using the prayer. What, you're, what you've done is you have not just kicked the cage of a lion. You've kicked the cage of the lion, and then you've opened the gate. Okay? In other words, th- th- this is supposed to be used by a priest who lives... And this is why a lot of the exorcist priests, like Father Ripper and stuff and others, they live a very monastic life because what they do, it's what very few people on planet Earth do. These guys are like God's secret service, Navy SEALs wrapped up into one, you know, uh, you know, Army Rangers. And these guys, it, it, it's a it's a it's a very uh, it, it's it's a very specialized field where the person, these exorcists, they're immersed in a life of prayer and the life of the sacraments, and they're protected by their vestments, by their ordination, by the indelible mark, by the prayers they offer every day, by their, uh, again, by their chastity. And so this is why this prayer, it's, it's, they're the one, it's like anything, Eddie, you know, you know in, in the sheriff's department, not everybody's AR-15 trained. You know, only there's one guy. Okay, who's got the AR? He's got it. He's trained. All right, make sure he's in with us when we kick down the door. This is the same thing with this prayer. Uh, any comments? 
Yeah, I just I wanted to make another uh, uh, analogy because law enforcement has has a similar analogy here. So when we talk about over penetration, a lot of a lot of uh, police. Oh, I like that. Right? Good. Yeah, it's over penetration. What happens is, uh, like people criticize the police departments when we went to, uh, 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 gosh, what kind of the ammunition, the, the hollow point to hollow points, okay? And so, well, why do you need a hollow point? That's so much damage. This is the idea behind it. When you have to fire at a suspect, you don't want the bullet to go straight through and do further damage. You want the bullet to shoot and hit and expand and stay in that one uh, perpetrator. And so that's what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about over penetration. You something that's wow. too big, too too heavy, and and it attracts other. Uh, uh, in this case, demons, which we don't want. We want the, the the to be like a knife, like a like a scalpel to cut it out, not not something that's uh, too much. Which is some of these, uh, which is what some of these Protestant groups are doing. They're using too much, and and it become. There's consequences. Just the consequence is is uh, recidivism, and and uh, as well as as uh, retaliation, retaliation, a demonic yeah. retaliation. This is even worse. Yep, the re- re- recidivism. In other words. You make the person feel good for a time. You you may have driven out the diabolical for a time, but because the Protestants don't have this understanding, Eddie, of living in a state of grace, they don't they don't have a proper understanding of grace. Luther didn't, Calvin didn't, and so this error has continued for five hundred years because they don't have an understanding of grace, sanctifying grace. Though they may pray for somebody and they may even you know rip off the the exorcism right from the internet and use that. And it may have some effect, uh, the recidivism rate, what it means, the persons, the demons are going to come back because they didn't teach the person how to live in a state of grace. And then the ones using this prayer, they or their families will be retaliated against. Eddie, you want to continue the article? Sure. It says the following. As well, it doesn't take long to find the exorcism right online. And Catholics may be tempted to pray the official prayers when faced with worries about the work of the devil in their lives. The issue naturally brings up the question, who can perform exorcisms? Is there a danger in saying these prayers as a layperson? The official right of exorcism is very clear about who can perform exorcisms. Quote, a priest, one who is expressly and particularly authorized by the ordinary, which is a local bishop. This means that no layperson and no priest uh, not, so, uh, no, not so authorized can perform uh, this reserved right. And so it says, moreover, the right mentions that the priest must be, a couple things here, must be properly distinguished for his piety, two, prudence, and three, integrity of life. He should fulfill this devout undertaking in all constancy and humility. He ought to be of mature years and uh, revered not alone for his office, but for his moral qualities. So just even in selecting a priest to, to be an exorcist, there are things that a bishop, uh, going by this uh, this uh, uh, criteria here, has to use in order to select a, a, a suitable priest to conduct that uh, the, the ministry of, of exorcism. No, you're right, Eddie. You know, you're just not going to get anybody who who just you know graduated from you know some diocesan seminary who doesn't wear his Roman collar. Or always wears it open with his shirt open with the, with, with the white feet or, or wears the guayaveras or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, again, uh, d- doesn't do his divine office, uh, right. you know, and, and just has this progressive mindset. They're not they're not going to be the ones that are picked for this. They, yes. they pick the ones that have these the ones that have a sterling quality. And in fact, here's what the article says. The priest appointed by the bishop must be a holy priest. And that so that disqualifies anybody who has these sexual hangups. By the way, okay, uh, you know homosexual, but, 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 you know inclinations, all, all that stuff. Because a demon's going to play on that if if he you're assigned to be the exorcist, he's going to attack that area, that weakness of yours that you like men, okay, or if you're, or if you're a fornicator, if you're all if you're out there, uh, you know, making babies like Father Mas- Marcel Marcel. I mean, <laughs> and people like yeah. I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, yeah. he had a few kids. Just, just think of, think about this one uh, our, our Bishop uh, 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 McCarrick. The harm that he did oh, gosh. In, 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 in being the person that he was and not fulfilling his duties as, as the archbishop or, or cardinal, look at the damage he did in his diocese over the flock that he was in mm-hmm. charge of. And now who's there to clean up the mess, Jess? you got to have somebody there that, that, that's going to 
recover from all the the spiritual harm he did yes. uh, and, and and actual harm uh you know criminal acts but uh but this is what we're talking about this is why what's going on in the church today just is so important for us to realize that when you have watered down doctrine and dogma this is the effects on mother church amen eddie uh on the chat um, i've got here a text that says john bradley's asking prayers for seven-year-old son who has the growth in his head. So let's pray for him right now in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, take a look at this little boy who's, who belongs to you. Uh, he was uh, he belongs to you through baptism and through the faith of his parents. We just ask you, Lord, if it's according to your divine will that you bring full healing to this, to this young little boy, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, just take care of all his pains, especially that growth in his head. And give the family, Lord, consolation and peace that all things will be well. And Mother Mary, cover his head with the veil of your holiness. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Everybody out there, uh, just remember this little boy, seven-year-old boy, uh, who has uh, a growth in his head. His name is his parents, John Bradley, asking prayers for him. Eddie, we'll go back to the article here about, um, about can anyone perform an exorcism. It says, the bishop must, be, must appoint a holy priest who will approach this powerful office with humility, not pride. He needs to realize that the demons do not leave a person because of his power, but because of God's power. In other words, it, it's dangerous for all of a sudden there to become the cult of father so-and-so, which happens, Eddie. It does oh, happen. Yeah. You better believe the exorcist it. is simply an instrument that God uses to expel the presence of an evil from an individual or place. Put simply, lay people do not have the ordained power or proper authority to perform an exorcism. This would also be true of priests trying to perform exorcisms without the bishop's authority. If such a case were to arise, a priest would be acting in disobedience to his direct superior and put himself into the devil's playground. On the other hand, lay people can pray general exorcism prayers, and those are minor exorcism prayers, that invoke God's health for deliverance from the demonic. So what it's talking about here is all of us as lay people right now listening, you can pray prayers that are called deprecatory prayers, such as the Our Father. The Our Father's a deprecatory prayer. You're asking God the Father to deliver us from, from the demon. Uh, the Anima Christi is a deprecatory prayer. The St. Michael the Archangel is a deprecatory prayer. There's a whole list of deprecatory prayers. Father Ripperger has them in his book. It's called uh, pray, Deliverance Prayers for Use by the Lady. Right here. It's just a whole book of, de- of prayers that we can pray. And also my book, uh, Lord Prepare My Hands for Battle, I also have a small little section on prayers that are approved by the church. So as long as we pray, pray by the rules, Eddie, we'll be, we'll be okay. That's it, Jess. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit of, real quick on how uh, Hollywood can distract us from uh, those teachings we're hearing about. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus 911. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app <laughs> for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle, and he says to me, Hey, man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show, and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the Mass in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's an on-fire Catholic, and he promotes uh, the Terry and Jesse show and the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Wow. Daniel, what a testimony. And I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, St. Paul says, So there abide faith, hope, and love, these three. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch, faith is the beginning, and love is the end. And God is the two of them brought into unity. 
Then comes everything else that makes up a Christian. May God grant that we may attain all the virtues that make for authentic followers of His Son. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Ten eight, we're back in service. Jess had uh, had to leave, so uh, Jess is gone for the day. He's going to be uh, headed out to California. But uh, as we continue with this with this article, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the prayers used, who can do an exorcism, etc. But uh, at the end of the article, it does say what is certain is that we should always be cautious when something demonic is involved. The devil is, is a deceiver and intent on luring us into evil, though, of course, his power is nothing compared to God's. The church in her wisdom has asked that one ho- uh, that one excuse me, has asked that only specific priests be committed to the ministry of exorcism. It is dangerous be- uh, business and one that has eternal consequences. One of the things that I wanted to mention about uh, about who can do an exorcism is that there are large groups of people that are sometimes misled uh, by Hollywood. Uh, one of the, one of the examples of that is the uh, in the movie The Right. If you remember, Anthony Hopkins uh, 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 played a priest by the name of Father Lucas, and the uh, in in the uh, in the movie The Right, you had, uh, which is a, a kind of a play on a, a, of a true story, which was the uh, uh, that of, of Father Gary Thomas. When he was a seminarian, um, uh, part of the time that he spent in Rome uh, doing that. So this is what's interesting to me, is if you remember in the movie The Right, uh, Father Lucas was heavily involved into, into uh, exorcism. There might have been even a little take on uh, Father Amorth there. But then the priest has a, an individual that he's uh, exercising, and then the uh, the what happens? You see that uh, Father Lucas begins to be afflicted, and it and it, it starts to show. But in the movie The Right, the actor that plays uh, Father Gary Thomas's character uh, finds himself as a seminarian finds that he needs to pray, and then actually does exorcism prayers as a seminarian. So this is something that is not allowed. Uh, a, a priest, a Catholic priest, is the only one that can do uh, exorcism, the the uh, uh, the formal rite of exorcism, and it has to be appointed by a bishop. And so uh, this obviously was not the case in the movie The Right. So therefore, we have uh, uh, additional information coming to God's flock about uh, somebody who can do prayers. And, and somebody can refer to the movie and say, "Hey, listen, uh, the right says that you know you had a seminarian doing it. Why can't I do it? You know, uh, this is the the problem that comes from uh, sometimes when you have people that uh, that want to put out information, and, and maybe their intent is is, is well intentioned, but it comes out wrong, and it uh, it can be dangerous for for some people." Uh, that begin to get involved in that. And so that's a danger to the articles ultimately talking about is that uh, there is in fact some eternal consequences that have to do with playing. I'll use that term lightly playing with this uh, ritual intended for a Catholic priest to conduct. Okay. Okay. Now the last article, uh, Jess and I were going to talk about is uh how to contact an actual exorcist. And I'm going to read this. It says, how to contact an actual exorcist. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? You're going to call demon busters, right? All right. If the presence of evil persists and, and other natural causes are ruled out, the third step typically involves contacting the designated exorcist. Now, sometimes your parish priest may immediately refer you uh, to the exorcist, but 
Often, even the parish priest does not even know who he is. Sometimes, only the bishop and those who work with him uh, directly know who that is. And that's very much the case, especially in big cities like Los Angeles and, and New York and in Chicago, where you have the uh, the exorcists that are not normally known to everybody in the diocese. It's kind of a... Uh, not a secretive, but it, it's it's a, a ministry that we know we have to protect the priest because what happens is you have witches, you have shamans and, and, and curanderos. They begin to to say incantations against the, 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 the uh, exorcist in a diocese. And so we have to protect the priest. The church has learned over the years that this has to be done because it, it, it really is something that, can interfere with the priest's ministry of of exorcism. Okay, uh, then he has to deal with uh, uh, the the spells, etc., that people are casting upon him, and that could be uh, uh, detrimental to identifying the proper spirits that they want to expel from the individual they're seeing. Okay, uh, many dioceses in the United States do not have a trained exorcist, uh, an exorcist, and may have to consult other bishops to find an exorcist nearby. Major exorcisms are very rare, and the devil's presence is often cast through minor exorcisms. So we have to remember that that, re, that major exorcisms, right, the um, the actual exorcism rite, uh, is is very rare. Not it's not done often, uh, and and uh, we have to understand that the priests that do these exorcisms um, understand that it is rare, and so a lot of times. What they do is they have subsequent subsequent priests. So they have uh, priests that expert are experts in deliverance, and maybe they don't conduct exorcisms. So you have to see it's kind of like a progression. So you you come to the parish priest. That's your normal first responder, your first contact, and say this spiritual uh, thing is going on in our lives, and this is what we need to do. We need to to uh, so the priest should say, "Okay, so let's do this. Let's uh, begin a prayer regiment. You know, let's let's uh, have you gone a confession? No, uh, and that's one of the things that that we do in intake. That's a very important question: is uh, before all the spiritual stuff happened to you, uh, how often do you go to confession? Because confession, like we heard from the exorcists and and people at Liber Cristo, uh, Dan and Kyle as well, we understand how important uh, a confession is." In, in, in getting rid of spirits and sometimes uh, a well a well uh, uh, intentioned a, a, a effective uh, uh, confession can actually uh, take the demons out of somebody's life to a point where they can now begin to reform re uh, establish their life prioritize things again uh, and come to realize that living in a state of grace is the only way to be able to rid ourselves of 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 certain demonic influences, and this is what happens. Um, the, the parish priests can do that, but sometimes you'll you'll go to a a priest that, uh, for example, uh, uh, handles deliverances as opposed to exorcisms. Now, some priests obviously can are handling both because when you have when you have an exorcist, he obviously is is, is uh, you know well versed in, 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 in exorcism or deliverance. And so, remember the the exorcism is something that uh, where where a demon has come into full possession of an individual, and anything less than that can be handled by the the minor ritual, the uh, the deliverance, and that could be done by priests that maybe don't have the authorization of the bishop to conduct exorcisms. However, they do have um, they do have the ability to see people and. Uh, uh, Diagnose them. They have prayer uh, a team that helps them with this. Uh, Jess and I are both members of of, of, of that team, and so uh, that's uh, th- that's what they do. So the uh, the, the priests that handle deliverances, they uh, intake, they they look at a, a, a write up, a report that somebody prepares for them after interview, and figures out what the best course is. Of course, obviously, you know, they have to have a prayer regiment. They have to conduct themselves, uh, have the person afflicted conduct themselves uh, in a state of grace to the best of their ability. Uh, and then and then what happens is the uh, the priest may uh, 
hear their confessions if it's been a long time since they've been to confession. Uh, that's why the, the, that intake question is so important. When was the last time you went to confession? Before all this happens, you know, how long was it? Well, it was 15 years or 20 years. Well, well, of course, now that you know that you have some demonic problems, of course you're going to co- go to confession. That's not perfect contrition. That's imperfect contrition. And so we're going to go there, and, and uh, he's going to confess out of, out of, of being scared uh, uh, of what's happening in his life his or her life so that that'll happen but then as 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 the, uh, the the case progresses you have the priest slowly but surely uh, uh catechizing and teaching these people how it is to maintain a a a, a grace a, a life of grace uh and not not go back to the same type of sins this is the this is an issue and then obviously uh i think most cases are handled uh in that state and ha- are handled by by someone who uh, a priest that takes these individuals that confesses them brings them along prayer regiment uh and and the sacraments of course and then they become to to understand themselves how important it is to uh, uh to conduct their lives way they reorder their lives maybe they there's some forgiveness that, that, that needs to take place in their life because there's a lot of uh, of anger out there ladies and gentlemen there's i mean Unforgiveness, and, and we've done shows on that. Ruben's done show on that. Is so important that uh, uh, that that in itself can bring somebody back into God's grace. Uh, just the forgiveness of others in in, in uh, of the harm that, that's been done to them, and that's one of the hardest things we understand that there is to do is to forgive somebody, uh, forgive a family member. How many of us have family members that that we need to forgive? That we need to to give to God, uh, we need to pray for them. This is this is one of the most important things there is when it comes to uh, a demonic uh, oppression, obsession, is that you don't forgive them. You hold something against them. That's like a little cancer growing inside us. That's like a little something inside us saying, you, you, you need your... your uh, you know your uh, your two pounds of flesh here. Don't don't let them get away with it. And that's that's a voice from 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 the pit of hell. We we uh, we understand that's what it is. And so that's why it's important for us to 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 pray for priests uh, and 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 learn that this process is not easy. Uh, once you get into this world of the demonic, into this this dynamic of 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 exorcism and and deliverance etc you have to understand that once you begin to under uh, to to acknowledge that you're being affected by demons this is the time when you have to uh now incorporate a priest to come in and take care of curses and hexes um and it becomes quite troublesome but the good news is is that a priest uh, not even necessarily an exorcist, but one that can uh, see you uh, as as somebody that is, is handles deliverances. That's the point where you can get rid of most demonic problems. So it's not it's not an issue. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's Jesus nine one one for today, uh, for this week. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned also for uh, Gary Machuda on hands on apologetics. Uh, he's on next. And remember, let's uh, pray for. Uh, for this young man that uh, that's in the hospital, pray for others that uh, we have to forgive. Okay, so we say, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. God, rebuke we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, prowl around the world, doing the destruction of souls. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great High Priest, May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things.
Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.